is up, artists, movers, and entrepreneurs. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here, and if you're an OG, what's up girl, how you been? Today's video is going to be a video series that I've really, really been wanting to do with you guys because I'm going to be breaking down some business basic terms that dancers should know if they are going to be operating their creative practice like a business. So as dancers, we know that the dance industry is super unpredictable and that sometimes we don't know when we're going to be working, we don't know when we're going to be auditioning, and so we often also don't know what our financial stability is going to look like. And so it's my goal to really get dancers to have multiple ways that they're making work, multiple ways that they are having themselves stable so that A, they can be financially stable from a month to month basis and also so that they don't have to take work that either doesn't align with them or it doesn't fit into their natural personality. And so that way they can do more stuff that actually feeds them creatively. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about brands. What is a brand? How does a brand help your business make more money? what workload is involved in maintaining a brand. And also I'm gonna be sharing some examples of common dance brands that you guys may be able to relate to in order to give you some context in terms of how these brands work. So this content is for you if you are a dancer who is currently a performer and is looking to maybe transition out of that phase and into using some of your other skills, like maybe you wanna be a photographer or a stylist or an interior designer or if you're a dancer who wants to actually build a company around selling a product. So maybe you want to start selling merch. Or if you are a dancer and you wanna start monetizing your likeness or your online presence. And so that means becoming an influencer and working with other brands. So if any of that applies to you, go ahead and give this video a like, and then let's jump into this video. So for starters, what is a brand? You may hear people say, oh, you need to pay attention to your personal brand, or this person has a really strong personal brand, but what exactly does that mean? A brand is basically an identifier for a business. And so this can apply for products like snacks, for example, there's Lay's and there's Nabisco, or it can apply to a service. So maybe the lawn care company that you use to tend to your lawn, or a brand can refer to a person when that person uses their likeness or social media presence in order to make money. And so in that case, it's called a personal brand. So when people think of a brand, they typically think of colors and fonts. And yes, brands typically do have strategic colors that they use and fonts that they use, but that's not all that a brand is. Your brand also has to encompass the experience that someone has with your company. So for example, if you were to take a dance class from say, Brian Friedman, you would probably expect to have really jazzy movement, stuff that's really fierce and really clean lines. Whereas if you were to take a class, say from Aaliyah Janelle, you're gonna expect some twerking, okay? A nice hip hop feel. And that is based on their two companies' brands and their personal brands. And so you understand that when you engage with their business or engage with them as a person, that is the experience that you're going to have. So it doesn't just have to do with colors and fonts. Why are brands important and how do they help us make that money? So a lot of times when people are coming to me and I work with them as clients, as a business consultant, they're coming to me because their business isn't making enough money or because they want to actually make more money in a way that is more strategic and measurable, which is why one of the main things I work with them on is their brand identity and having a really good grasp on what their business's brand is. And that's because if you have a better idea of what your business is and what the experience of it is like, then you have a really good idea of who to actually bring in and hopefully try and get them to become customers. As dancers and creatives, your brand really allows you to curate what people think of when they think of your business. And when people have more of an idea of what to expect, then it gives them a better idea of if they want to support you at all. So if you're a photographer, your brand could involve not only the style of photos that you do, but who you choose to photograph. Giving people an idea of what to expect really allows them to trust you more and to trust that when they work with you or when they buy from you, they're gonna get what they're hoping to get from it. 
Strong branding can also make you more relatable to future customers and distinguish you from other people who are in that field. So for example, if you're looking to take a beginner jazz class, maybe you haven't taken class in a long time, you're probably gonna take a class from someone who has really branded themselves as someone who is calm, maybe someone who is nurturing, maybe someone who really goes over the basics of jazz dancing versus a jazz teacher who is very fiery, very crass, and whose movement is very advanced. And those two teachers have really done their job of branding themselves so that when customers or future dancers come in, they understand what it is to expect. And that way you can take the class that better fits you. And so you won't end up in a really hard class being super stressed, but you also won't end up being bored because you took the wrong class from the wrong teacher. And those teachers feel great because they also get to work with the kind of students that they love working with. So that way the teacher who's super crass and fiery doesn't get annoyed because the wrong kind of person showed up to their class. So with all of this in mind as business owners, how does your brand affect your workload or the amount of work and the kinds of work that you're doing on a daily basis? And for that, my answer is that your brand is typically going to affect the how in your business. So it involves how you're choosing to present yourself in a way that aligns with the brand identity that you're trying to create. So that could involve the types of music that you use, the way that you dress, the way that you speak, even the types of platforms that you're on. People on Instagram are sometimes very different than people whose main platform is a podcast or a blog. Branding can also really affect how you are using written language. So how you are writing the captions on your social media, how you're writing the copy on your website in a way that really will relate to the people who are coming to you based off of the brand identity that you are trying to maintain even how you're writing the text in your HR process and your hiring process and bringing on team members. What's the verbiage that you wanna use there to make sure that that brand identity stays the same no matter who is doing the work. Also, it will affect how you will choose to grow your business after you reach a certain level of success. So once you've reached the milestones that you've been trying to reach, when you hit that point, how will you choose to grow in a way that still aligns with the brand identity that you've created and still connects to the identity that your customers and your future clients already recognize? And so all of this is very important because your branding really allows you to figure out who your target audience is. Who are the people that you want to engage with your content and eventually engage with your business in a way that helps it bring in more money? In the space of influencing and monetizing your online presence, Branding really gives you a good idea of what kind of other brands you would work well with. They're trying to talk to the same kind of person you are or that influencer is, and so they realize that it's a really good investment for them to use you as a way to push their product in front of other people. And so this is why brands like a Gaynor Minden or a Block are more likely to work with dancers who are influencers like a Catherine Morgan, whereas brands like Berju Shoes or Nude Bar are more likely to work with a Kira Harper. Catherine Morgan is a ballet dancing influencer, and so most of her target audience are also ballet dancers. And so that's why she's more likely to work with ballet-based brands whose target audience is the same, whereas Akira Harper, she is more known for her heels dancing and she's a black dancer in that field. And so brands who either are geared towards helping black dancers find things that work for their skin tones or brands who make heels, they're more likely to work with her. Really being able to show brands that you have a strong personal brand will give them more confidence and allow you to make more money because they'll understand, oh yeah, this is a good investment we're gonna reach the right people. The most important thing to remember about a brand is it's not just about getting people to come to you, but it's also about getting people to really feel welcome once they have found you and to help them feel like either following you or working with you or buying from you was a really great decision that they made and that they may want to make that decision again in the future. Branding isn't just about bringing people in, but it's also about keeping them happy. And so that can involve, you know, your customer service or how responsive you are in the DMs and stuff like that, that keeps people feeling engaged with your brand and make sure that your identity remains the same throughout their entire experience with you. 
So as you can see, having a really good understanding of your personal brand or of your business's brand is a huge foundational step in building your business because it's kind of where all of your other stuff comes from. If you don't feel like you have a really good, strong understanding of your brand, or maybe you just want some help with your business in general, I will have a link down below for you to schedule a coffee date session with me. So in my coffee date sessions, I get to work with you guys a little bit more closely one-on-one -on -one, and kind of help you find those missing links that are affecting every other piece in your business. And oftentimes it has a lot to do with your branding. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and and share it with a friend because I feel like all dancers and creatives need to know this information, especially if they want to make money with their talents. If you want to see the rest of the terms that I have coming in this series and just some other dance business content that I have here on my channel, then go ahead and subscribe and become a part of my dance fam. And I will see you guys in my next video next weekend. Later.